The Florida Horse Podcast is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this podcast of the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. I am thrilled to advise that we have even more good news and major state legislative accomplishments to report for our Florida thoroughbred breeding and racing industry already in this year. 2024 has seen our Florida Breeder and Stallion Awards, as well as our Florida Bred Incentives and Open Company in overnight and stake races, reaching an all-time high in our 75-year history representing a 52% gross in Breeders' Awards increases and a 66% increase in Florida racing incentives. And that's all because of the 223 legislation. We're gonna to talk to you some more about the 2024. Though FTBOA once again led the charge this session, the passes of such historic and innovative legislation requires much collaboration. It requires team effort. With FTBOA every step along the way were our Tallahassee-based lobbyists. Matt Bryan in his third decade with us as chief lobbyist and the talented, relationship-driven John Reese and the entire Smith, Bryan, and Meyer lobby firm. They worked very hard with us in pulling off this big win for our Florida thoroughbred industry and sport under my strategic coaching based on our team shared chemistry, work ethic, relationship building, and honest brokering. I am very pleased to welcome John Reese to this podcast and formally introduce him to our audience. John played a very substantial role in assisting, supporting, and advancing the last two years of successful legislation for the Florida thoroughbred industry. We look forward to many more good things with him on the team, he has big boots to fill with Matt's year-end and well-deserved retirement at the end of this year, though we have no doubt he won't require a smaller boot size. So, John, welcome to our show. Tell us specifically just a little bit about your history with the state of Florida and your history with government lobbying, which you do now, the Tallahassee scene. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you, Lonnie. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Um, what I've learned working with the industry is I'd like to refer to myself as a Florida thoroughbred, uh, born and raised here. Um, actually grew up, was born and raised, and for all intents and purposes, grew up in, in Miami-Dade County, right around Miami Beach area. Um, and I've got some ties back to the track and industry as a young kid, which I'll tell you a little bit about. But um, went to Florida State in 2005, graduated in 2009, and almost immediately jumped into a, uh, a legislative career. Now, I've been blessed over the years to work for trade associations. I've worked as a state house uh, legislative aide. I've worked uh, for the Commissioner of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services as their legislative affairs liaison. Uh, and then worked in a corporate capacity for about six years before joining Smith, Bryan & Myers and by extension working with the FTBOA, which uh, the last two years have been an incredible whirlwind and an exceptional uh, experience that I think we'll dive into a little bit more here shortly. Fantastic. You know, if I didn't know any better, it sounds like you're a thousand years old based on all that experience. But uh, boy, I've seen every bit of that talent show up along the way in our, in our work, by the way. You made reference to some, some racing experience in, in your past. Tell us about that real quick. We, we in this racing world, horse world, always love to hear about the experience of others. Yeah, and I, I want to dispel any notions. I was not a racetrack operator by any means, but I, I did grow up in my early years in a high-rise condo overlooking Gulfstream racetrack. Um, I was so ingrained in the business uh, as, as a, um, call it an attendee or, or as a uh, spectator, um, so much so that my parents got married in the uh, winter circle at Gulfstream Racetrack uh, in the mid-90s. And so uh, I was actually talking to my dad on the way up here, and he was reminding me of a story where uh, at six years old, I was getting ready to leave the pool, and some young kids said, John, come stay with us. We're going to hang out. And I said, sorry, guys, i got to get to the track. And so uh, it's run deep in our, in our lives, both Calder and Gulfstream. I have some many fond memories around the industry, uh, both on the racing and breeding side, and, and I'm very grateful for that. And, and to see it come to come to life in a way that I get to represent the industry in Tallahassee is a pretty cool thing. We and really the state's thoroughbred industry as a whole have experienced nothing short of amazing results, historic results, uh, the last two years of legislative session. Can you walk our audience through, I mean, we walked them through last year what this legislation was. Could you briefly remind them about what the 23 legislation 
did and how that led into 24 and why 24 is even a better version, if you will. Where it all started was in 2023 with a historic racing program, as you know, uh, totaling $66 million over two years or $33 million per year. Um, significant resources uh, for the FTBOA, starting with $5 million in breeder uh, racing and uh, racing incentives and, and purses and purse supplements, uh, as well as promotional type um, activities. Uh, two and a half million, additional two and a half million for specific Florida thoroughbred incentives. Uh, let's not forget about HISA, right? We're looking at close to six million uh, in HISA credits that would be afforded to the industries that the uh, tracks would otherwise be um, encumbered to, to offset. And so uh, when you look at that coupled with the almost actually $20 million, um, 15 million to Gulfstream uh, for purses as well as facility upgrades, and then 5 million to Tampa Bay Downs, uh, that's a total of, again, $33 million a year. What's really neat, Lonnie, is that when you look at the accomplishments of our efforts in 2024 with our legislative friends and other stakeholders, is that that $66 million or, or $33 million a year um, will no longer be sunset after two years, but will remain in perpetuity should the legislature continue to authorize it. You know, and everybody that's, that's watching knows, Two years doesn't give you much certainty in terms of what the future of the industry may look like. Not when stability and investment are key to everything. You're correct. Two years was great, but it was still not a long-term platform to build upon. That's, that's exactly right. A lot of questions are, you know, if I'm going to make an investment in the state, continue to make investment or perhaps be a new investor, uh, what's the continuity of the industry look like? What's the continuity of the state's role look like? And so, uh, thankfully, we took that message to Tallahassee and they listened. Successful legislation, John, like we just saw pass and you worked so hard on uh, it happens i mean it truly takes a village i know it's a it's a corny saying it doesn't happen easily it takes a lot of folks but if i can get your reaction to some of these folks that um during our our work up in tallahassee definitely uh, saw step up and in and, and, and play big in this role of uh, of of getting this economic development support to our industry if i might get a few reactions from you I'm, First of all, it's tough for me to mention President Pasadomo without still extending our thoughts and, and prayers over uh, the, the recent unexpected passing of her, of her dear husband. So um, our, our Senate president, uh, such a good person, such a good lady, uh, we feel for her on that. Um, going, shifting to the gears back to the legislative session, she played a key role in this year's session and obviously in last year's discussion as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Lonnie, and I, I echo your thoughts and condolences to, um, to to President Pasadomo and the passing of her late husband, John Pasadomo, who I got to know somewhat over the years and found to be a wonderful fellow, so I appreciate your comments there. Uh, you know, President Pasadomo, going back to the legislation at hand, um, I mean, she's just an incredibly charismatic leader. She's a wonderful woman. Um, I, I think you can say, having been in the meeting, uh, been in the room for those meetings, um, her commitment to the industry is unwavered. Um, I think she, one might argue, she was the architect behind a continued program, uh, if not maybe the initial thought leader and potentially the tip of the spear. She was certainly the spark that got the uh, multiple year fire going. No she? question, yes, no yes. question. That's not to take credit away from anyone, That's but right. she's, um, she's uh, been unwavering. And, and what I would say is, is she has two more years. Uh, she doesn't have to go through election, but she's got two more years of a four year term left. Um, so should she decide to see that uh, that two year term after her presidency, um, she'll still be a player, uh, I think, in leadership circles. And of course, we as an industry are happy to have her in the state Senate should she continue to do so. But over the years, she's absolutely just developed into being one of my my favorite people up there just just to visit with. But if you put your industry hat on, I think the thing that our, our audience really should know, and, and you've heard it, and you know I didn't know it till a few years ago, is um, President Pasadomo is a fan of thoroughbred racing and, and therefore breeding, and she's been a fan since a child and her experiences with her family. She's told you and I and Matt about it no, multiple times. So not only was this somebody there to help from an ag business economic development perspective, a true fan that loved, the, loved these, the, these thoroughbreds. So many thanks to her. Uh, how about, we, we have to talk about um, House Speaker Renner when we, when we talk about these, this list of people that have been helping us. I think you might agree with this, and those that know Speaker Renner, um, one way to characterize him is principled. There's no yes. question about it. If you look a lot of, at a lot of his policies uh, over the last couple of years, uh, and this was no exception, right? He saw the, 
what the investment in the state's industry meant for the state of Florida in terms of return on investment, what that meant for uh, breeders, owners, trainers that, that invest their time and resources in the state. Um, and again, much like Senate President uh, Kathleen Passanomo never really wavered on that and, and by extension gave his support to Chair McLean uh, and those leaders to, to move forward with a package that we think is sustainable and will be a big win. And when you have that type of leadership, when you have the Speaker of the House who has, has talked with us a number of times over the years and has always been interested in, in being supportive um, many, many, many years ago, um, and then you've, you've got uh, President Pasadomo, that's a couple pretty big leaders to have weighing in no question yeah. maybe once in a once in a blue moon yeah exactly i mean it was uh we were in some rarefied blessed air at that point in time you, you made reference to the next uh contributor and we had a chance to uh acknowledge him for such a great achievements in 2023 with our first ever matt bryan distinguished advocacy award um, Mar marion county's own state rep stan mcclain and Stan McLean, uh, uh, a lot of us have known, I've known him for 12 years. And not only is he, is he a special individual and, and so uh, caring about this community, boy, did he step up to the occasion as, um, as uh, finance and tax chair and on his guidance and assistance with both years' worth of legislation. Uh, what's your takeaway on Stan's incredible performance? Yeah, I, Lonnie, I mean, you've heard the old saying, politics is local. Um, you're right. I mean, for those that are not acutely aware of the legislative process, typically you have eight years before your term limited. Um, Chair McLean was clearly a member of uh, Speaker Renner's leadership team uh, and really used that opportunity in his last two years as finance and tax chairman. His love and support for the industry and the desire to see us succeed um, really utilized that two-year window to not only tee up the program as we discussed for 2023, but to really um, really push it into the uh, into the stratosphere in 2024 uh, by removing that statutory um, expiration. And so uh, I don't know that enough can be said about what Stan's done to step up for the men and women in the thoroughbred industry, in the Florida thoroughbred industry, um, but he is to be recognized and commended for, for his efforts today. Very well said. Stan McLean will be a, always be a hero to our industry. No question. And uh, we, we sure appreciate those Herculean efforts on his part. Um, on the Senate side, we had uh, tax and finance or, or ways and means chair uh, Blaze Angolia, Senator Blaze Angolia. What uh, some of your reactions there? He had a, he had an important uh, role in this process. No question. I, look, uh, Senator Angolia is a force to be reckoned with, um, as you know, and you sat in those committee meetings with me as he would take questions, um, not necessarily uh, you know negative questions, but tough questions asking about, is this investment have a return? Right. What are we gonna see is, where could, this, where could these dollars go to the state and other capacities as other services? Um, and, and Chair Angolia never, you know, never wavered. He, was, he had great answers. He understood the commitment that the Senate president and that body um, wanted to deliver to the industry. And so I give him a lot of credit as being um, the lead on, on championing that package and seeing it to the floor and ultimately sending it to the governor. What a wonderful and diverse mixture of, of personalities and skill sets uh, um, we got to navigate through and, and, and getting all the help from these wonderful leaders. I know we're missing some out. We're, we're missing out on some of them, and there's many more we, we can go over. Um, but uh, any you would want to mention right now that were additional uh, above and beyonders in this process? Yeah, I, I think a couple I, I might identify that are think are worthy than more than just a shout out would be Representative Lawrence McClure. Um, Representative McClure is from the East Hillsborough County, Dover area. Uh, not only a wonderful friend, but somebody who really sort of took the bull by the horns early on. Um, he was an aspiring leader, is an aspiring leader, and will certainly be a leader um, coming into this legislative session and beyond. Um, really did a great job pulling the parties together who didn't always see eye to eye, who maybe had different difference of opinions on how to accomplish these goals. Um, and so he was a key part of that. And I think in his capacity uh, in his last two years in the Florida House, we'll have an even more meaningful and outsized role in what this package will look like or, or hopefully ensuring its continuity. Um, it, beyond Representative McClure, I would also acknowledge that none of this would happen without Agriculture Commissioner Wilton Simpson. Um, now, he's not a voting member of the House or Senate, so in terms of legislation, you wouldn't see his fingerprints or his direct involvement on anything. Um, but as a former state Senate president, 
um, somebody who still carries a big stick in Tallahassee and, and certainly as commissioner is the voice of Florida agriculture. Um, this doesn't happen without Commissioner Simpson. And this doesn't get across the finish line without his input, without his involvement. And so um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank him and his team um, from seeing not only the beginning of this package in 2023, uh, but through its you know uh, expansion or evolution, let's call it, through this last legislative session. We both have a very good friend and colleague um, in Matt Bryant. I mean, Matt's been one of my best friends in my life for the past 12 years. And we've also worked uh, probably more closely than almost anybody else I've ever worked with. Uh, we've seen our shares of, uh, we had to play, we're in football parlance, we're both offensive guys, mm -hmm. and we had to play defense for, you know, for nine, 10 years, which sometimes you have to get your defense down before you can make those proper scores, right? Uh, you got to show up in time for offense, good timing for you. But, Better to be uh, lucky than good. I'm that's told. right. That's right. Um, Matt um, uh, has been with your firm for decades, and at the end of the year, he'll be uh, he'll be moving on. He'll always be he'll he'll always be part of our uh, of our uh, of our uh, uh, rooting support team. But he will be uh, he'll be he'll be he'll be doing different things, and you'll be f uh, firmly um, in the lead seat. And uh, we've got the rest of the team up there at Smith Brian Myers. Uh, uh, falling in line to support us as well, and including uh, Jeffrey, the senior partner, a bunch of other great folks you have. But some thoughts on Matt before we actually let him tell a little bit. Uh, what we have is an interview from the other night at the gala where, where Matt got honored by having an award named in his honor that was then given for the first time to Stan McLean. There was a lot of mutual happiness, good feelings, good fun, and I'm not even sure what he said at the microphone, so some of this will be you know, a surprise both to you and I, but your thoughts before we turn the ultimate segue of this show over to some uh, pre-recorded comments from Matt right after he was in Ocala last week to get that award. Uh, what's your thoughts on your, on your colleague? I know for both of us, we can also use the word mentor, right? But uh, I'll, I'll let you close out with those thoughts. I was reflecting on my 14 years in this process, right? And the common denominator is the, the type of mentors that you have over the years or that hopefully most are blessed to have. Uh, and Matt's been nothing but a brilliant mentor over the last two years. Um, and that's in our, our capacities representing the FTBOA, other clients. Matt, as I often say, is I, I will bring him a Rubik's Cube and in a few seconds he can unwind it with a strategy and an idea, uh, an outcome and how to resolve issues. Um, that's a that's a lost art. That's a lost talent in Tallahassee you don't see as often, especially when you combine you know his his intellect and, and his abilities with his work ethic. He's he's unmatched, and it frankly lights a fire underneath me. I think it lights a fire underneath the association and makes us want to do better and go further. Um, so I'm candidly going to miss that. Um, I told Matt to keep his phone on uh, after January one uh, because I'm going to be reaching out to him quite a bit. Uh, I'm very fond of Matt, and I'm, I'm very grateful for not only the opportunity he's given me, but for what he's accomplished in his almost 40 years of service. He, he, he really is absolutely at the top of his game in his field. I think he set the bar high when we got here, when I got here, and when you arrived years later. And um, you know the way he and I always looked at it, if, 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 I was, if, I was, if I was the coach still always trying to get to offense, he was the quarterback that had a lot of audible authority and it would be amazing what our plays would look like sometimes before they got done. But I'll tell you, we got a lot of things done. And, um, you know, I think it's only fitting that we close out this program with a guy that has as much to do with these last two successful years of legislation as virtually anybody else we've mentioned in his, his own way, because I don't think anybody could have worked it harder and worked those relationships harder. But that is, that is our buddy from Smith, Brian Myers, Matt Bryan, and we'd like to seg out with Matt's comments on what he thinks about this whole world of Florida Breads, FTBOA, winning his award, the successful legislation, uh, and the like. So, Matt, we leave it to you. Take it away. As the FTBOA lobbyist for 40 years, the Matt Bryan Distinguished Advocacy Award is 
named after you. How has tonight been for you? Oh, it's just 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 crazy good, crazy good. I you know I think I told Representative McLean after the event. I'm not sure I've ever gotten an award for anything. Maybe back in sixth grade or something. But it's been a long time, so it's been really nice. You know, it's 40 years of representing the good guys in the industry, and uh, it's nice to be recognized for it. It's a little bit sad to be to be leaving after this time, but uh, we've had a good, really good couple of years. So it's good, nice, nice to go out on a high. It's unique and groundbreaking. We haven't seen something like this uh, for the paramutual industry in my 40 years uh, of lobbying. We've got essentially an appropriation through a tax package of $60 million every two years for increasing purses, breeders' awards, special racing awards, and for enhanced regulation for the safety of the thoroughbreds. And uh, the legislature thought that we were worth the investment and now we have to prove to them that we are and uh, they've invested but you know you constantly have to justify that investment going forward and the good Lonnie and John and the good folks that are going to be around will be able to do that but uh, the legislature certainly stepped up and we're so pleased Dan McLean led that charge. Well you championed the biggest incentives in history for the Florida thoroughbred industry. How has that helped Florida? You know, we've made the investment now, so now what we need to do is, you know, it takes a little bit of time for horses to get bred and to be born and to move forward, and so, you know, we'll wait and see, you know, how that plays out. It creates an um, industry incentive so that, you know, they can start moving forward with, with breeding. Wonderful. And um, what does this recognition mean for you tonight? Yeah, well, you know, it's just a, it's a great, award, it's a great, you know, it's a great opportunity when people recognize one person, but this was a team effort, and so I was just, you know, I'm just honored to be able to receive it, and certainly named after a good friend of mine, and, you know, so it was just really just a great evening. The Florida Horse Podcast is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association.